Easy Reading Edition 8, The Promise, Sabbath, May 14. Read for this week's lesson, Genesis 22, verses 1 to 12, Genesis 22, verses 8, 14, and 19, Genesis 23, Genesis 24, Genesis 24, verses 6 to 7, up to Genesis 25, verse 8. Memory verse, Abraham lived to be a very old man. The Lord blessed him and everything he did. Genesis 24, verse 1. God keeps his promise. Sarah has a son. Abraham is an old man at the time. Genesis 21, verse 2. Abraham names the baby Isaac. Read Genesis 21, verses 1 to 5. But the story of Abraham is not finished. Abraham takes Isaac when he is grown to the mountain of Moriah. There, Abraham must give Isaac to God as a burnt offering. God replaces Isaac with a male sheep at the last minute. Genesis 22 verse 13. The sheep is a word picture that shows us the saving plan of God. God wants to bless humans because of Isaac. Genesis 22, verses 17 and 18. That blessing, of course, is Jesus. Acts 13, verse 23. This story shows us much Bible truth about the saving plan of God. Sarah dies sometime after Isaac is offered to God. Genesis 23. Isaac has no wife at this time. Abraham is not sure how God will keep his promise about giving him many children. So, Abraham makes sure that the right future will happen. Abraham commands his servant Eliezer to prepare a marriage for Isaac. Eliezer prepares a marriage for Isaac with Rebekah, Genesis 24. Rebekah will give Isaac two sons, Genesis 25, verses 21 to 23. Abraham also gets married again. His new wife, Keturah, gives Abraham many children. Genesis 25 verses 1 to 6. This week, we will read about Abraham from Moriah to the end of his life. Genesis 25 verses 7 to 11. Sunday, May 15, on the mountain of Moriah. Genesis 22 verses 1 to 12. What is the meaning of the test that God gives to Abraham? What spiritual lessons can we learn from this surprising story? For the answers, read Genesis 22 verses 1 to 12 and Hebrews 11 verse 17. God commands Abraham to give him Isaac as a burnt offering. This command goes against an important Bible rule, right? God forbids his people to kill other humans and offer them as religious gifts to him. So why does God now test Abraham in this powerful and difficult way? First, we must understand what a Bible test is. Then we will better understand the answer to this difficult question. In the Bible, a test includes two parts or ideas. The first part of a Bible test is to show you what is in your heart. Deuteronomy 8 verse 2, compare with Genesis 22 verse 12. The second part of a Bible test shows the mercy of God to the person who takes the test. Exodus 20 verses 18 to 20. So in this test, Abraham takes a risk. If Abraham gives up Isaac, Abraham will lose his future that is, his future children that will be born to him because of Isaac. But Abraham trusts God, even he does not understand the test. Faith means that we trust God, right? We trust God even when we can see or understand what is happening. Bible faith is not about what we give to God, for sure. What we give to God is important, Romans 12 verse 1. But Bible faith is real about our trust in God and accepting His mercy that we did nothing to earn. We see the Bible truth in the story on the mountain of Moriah. 
Look at all the good things that Abraham did in his life before this time. Abraham did many good works. He was kind and helped other people. Now he takes a trip to the mountain of Moriah with his son. For sure, this trip causes Abraham to suffer as he thinks about what will happen to Isaac there. But none of these things are enough to save Abraham. Why? Because the Lord himself gives a male sheep for the offering. This male sheep shows us the only way to be saved, Jesus. This story also shows us the mercy of God for us. Our good behavior does not save us. Only the obedience of Jesus saves us. Ephesians 3 verse 8. Compare with Romans 11 verse 33. What does this story about Abraham teach you about faith? How should we show faith? Monday, May 16. God will give us what we need. Genesis 22, verses 8, 14, and 19. How does God keep his promise that he will give Abraham and Isaac what they need? What does God give him? For the answers, read Genesis 22, verses 8, 14, and 18. Isaac asked his father where they will get the lamp needed for the offering. Abraham gives his son an interesting answer. God himself will provide. Bring the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Genesis 22 verse 8. This verse also may be written as God will offer himself as the lamb. The answer of Abraham shows us what the saving plan of God is all about. The Lord himself will suffer and pay the penalty for our sins. The story about Abraham and Isaac on the mountain of Moriah shows us what will happen on the cross. Read John 1 verses 1 to 3 and Romans 5 verses 6 to 8. How do these verses help us understand what happened on the cross? There on the mountain of Moriah, Abraham turns and sees behind him the male sheep whose horns were caught in a bush of thorns. Genesis 22 verse 13. This male sheep shows us Jesus who wore a crown made from thorns. Abraham sees Jesus in the word picture of this sheep too. That is why Abraham named that place the Lord sees. That is the reason people today say on this mountain the Lord is seen. Genesis 22 verse 14. Jesus himself gives us proof that Abraham saw him in the gift of the male sheep the day on the mountain. Jesus says, Your father Abraham was filled with joy at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. John 8 verse 56 God commands Abraham to kill his son. Why does God give Abraham a test of faith? God also wants to show Abraham his saving plan. Abraham suffers very much during this test. God allows Abraham to suffer so that Abraham will understand from his own experience how much God will give to us when he offers his son to save us humans. Ellen G. White, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 154, Adapted. How does this story about Abraham help us better understand what happened at the cross? Tuesday, May 17, Sarah dies. Genesis 23. In Genesis 22 verse 23, we read that Rebekah is born. Rebekah is the future wife of Isaac. Genesis 24. In Genesis 23, we read that Sarah dies and is buried. Some time after her death, Abraham marries Keturah, Genesis 25, verses 1 to 4. What important parts to the death of Sarah and the place where she is buried have in the promise that God makes to Abraham? For the answer, read Genesis 23. 
Sarah dies some time after Isaac comes back from the mountain of Moriah. The Bible tells us that Sarah lived to be 127 years old. Genesis 23 verse 1. Sarah is the only woman in the Old Testament whose age is written down in the Bible. This information shows us that Sarah is a very important person in the story about Abraham. She joined him on his travels. She was by his side for better or for worse. She was part of his life when he failed to show faith from time to time. Genesis 12 verses 11 to 13. Most of Genesis 23 talks about the grave that Abraham bought for Sarah. This story talks more about the place where she is buried than about her death. The Bible tells us that Sarah dies in the land of Canaan, Genesis 23 verse 2. Sarah is the first person from the family of Abraham who dies in the promised land and is buried there. So the death of Sarah is connected with the promised land. Abraham argues with the sons of Heth about the land that Abraham wants to buy the grave for, Sarah. This story shows us that Abraham is interested in far more than a place to bury his wife. Abraham is interested in making his home in the promised land forever. Read Genesis 23 verse 6. What does this Bible verse tell us? about how much people respected Abraham. Why is the respect and honor that other people showed Abraham so important to the plan that God had for Abraham and his life? Wednesday, May 18, A Wife for Isaac, Genesis 24. Genesis 23 tells us that Sarah dies. Genesis 24 tells us the story about how Isaac marries Rebekah. The death of Sarah is connected to the marriage of Isaac and Rebekah. Why is Abraham worried about a wife for Isaac? Why does Abraham not want Isaac to marry a Canaanite woman? For the answers, read Genesis 24. Abraham trusts the promise of God. So Abraham believes his future children will live in the promised land. That is why Abraham does not want Isaac to make his future home outside the promised land. Genesis 24 verse 7. Also, Abraham does not want Isaac to marry someone who will turn his heart away from God. So Abraham sends his servant to find a wife for Isaac from among the family group of Abraham. Isaac brings his bride into the tent of his mother, Sarah. Isaac loves Rebekah very much, so he was comforted after his mother's death. Genesis 24, verse 67. We see from this story that Isaac is filled with pain and sorrow after his mother died. The story about the marriage of Isaac and Rebekah is filled with prayers and promises. From this beautiful story, we can learn many lessons about the loving favor of God and about human freedom. Abraham asked his servant to swear an oath in the name of God. The Lord is the God of heaven and the God of earth. I want you to make a promise to me in this name. Genesis 24 verse 3. Do you see that Abraham believes that God is the one who made the skies and the earth? Genesis 1 verse 1, Genesis 14 verse 19. Next, Abraham talks about the Lord, the God of heaven and his angel. Genesis 24 verse 7. These two names show us the angel of the Lord who came from heaven to the mountain of Moriah. He stopped. Isaac from being killed. Genesis 22 verse 11. This angel is the same God who controls all life. He will lead the servant of Abraham to choose a bride for Isaac. Abraham accepts 
that the woman may not choose to marry Isaac. Yes, God is all-powerful, but he does not force anyone to obey him. Rebecca can say yes or no. God will respect her decision. So we see in this story an example of the gift of free choice that God gives us. Thursday, May 19, a wife of Abraham, Genesis 24, verse 67 to Genesis 25, verse 8. Read in Genesis 24, verse 67 to Genesis 25, verse 8 about the final happenings in the life of Abraham. What do these stories show us? After Sarah dies, Abraham marries again. His wife comforts him after the death of Sarah in the same way that Rebekah comforts Isaac. Genesis 24 verse 67 The name of the new wife of Abraham is Keturah. Who is Keturah? We are not really sure. The Bible talks about the sons of Keturah and Abraham in the same list as the sons of of Hagar. So it is possible that Hagar and Keturah may be the same person. Abraham sends the sons of Keturah away when they are grown to, just as he sent Ishmael away. Abraham wants everyone to see that Isaac is the one who will get everything he owns when he dies. So Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. But while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines, wives, who were less important than Sarah. Then he sent them, the sons, away from his son Isaac. He sent them to the land of the east, Genesis 25, verses 5 and 6. The word concubines shows us that Keturah was the same type of wife as Hagar and not like Sarah. In Genesis 25 verses 1 to 4 and 12 to 18, we see a list of the children that Abraham has with Keturah. We also see a list of the children of Ishmael. What is the reason for this list? No doubt, this list is proof that God will keep his promise to Abraham. Abraham will be the father of many people groups. The list of the sons of Ishmael is made of 12 family groups, compared with Genesis 17 verse 20. Jacob also had 12 sons who were the fathers of 12 family groups, Genesis 35 verses 22 to 26. As we know, God will not make his agreement with Ishmael and his children. God will make his agreement only with the future children of Isaac. Genesis 17 verse 21. So God keeps his promise to Abraham. God blesses him with many sons. God told Abraham many years before, you will live many years, die in peace and be buried. Genesis 15 verse 15. Compare Ecclesiastes 6 verse 3. In the end, the Lord keeps his promises to his loyal servant Abraham. The Lord shows Abraham his loving favor and mercy. In the Old Testament, Abraham is a wonderful example, maybe even the best example of how God saves us. God saves us by his mercy when we believe in him. Friday, May 20, Additional Thought Abraham was a special messenger from God. God shared his plans with Abraham, Genesis 18 verse 17. God showed Abraham his plan to save humans by the death of his son. Isaac is a word picture for Jesus, the Son of God. God will give Jesus as an offering for the sins of everyone on earth. God wants Abraham to understand the good news about Jesus and how his saving plan works. So God gives Abraham a test. God commands Abraham to kill his precious son, Isaac. Abraham suffers deeply during this test. God allows Abraham to suffer in this way for a reason. 
The pain and suffering from this experience will help Abraham understand the plan of God to save humans. Abraham learns how much God must give when he gives us his son to save us from his sin. Nothing else that Abraham experienced comes close to matching the suffering he feels when he obeys the command from God to kill Isaac. Ellen G. White, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, page 369, Adapted. Abraham becomes an old man. He expects to die soon, but he needs to do one more thing before he dies then he will be sure that God can keep his promises to his future children. Abraham must find Isaac a wife. God chooses Isaac as the one to keep the knowledge of his law safe. God also chooses Isaac to be the father of his chosen people. The people of Canaan worship false gods, so God does not allow his people to many marry the Canaanites. God knows that will happen. If his people marry the Canaanites, the Canaanites will lead his people to turn away from his completely. To Abraham, the choice of a wife for Isaac is a very important business. Abraham wants his son to marry a woman who will not lead him from God. Isaac trusts his father to choose the best wife for him. Isaac believes that God himself will lead out choosing a wife from him. Ellen G. White, Patriots and Prophets, page 171, adapted. Discussion questions. Number one, Abram was willing to kill Isaac to please God. How much faith and strength do you think he needed to do that? What surprises you and troubles you about this story? Number two, what about your freedom to choose? Why must we have free choices, Christians? What examples do we have in the Bible about free choice? Sometimes people made the wrong choices. How do these stories show us that God worked out His saving plan for their lives anyway?